precision has been thrown around, by, I think, by a lot of different traditions. And uh, I feel like you've used either that exact word or ones like it to describe um, enlightened or realized perception, to see things as they are, to see things precisely. Um, why is it precisely? How is, how is uh, realized perception precise? Well, it's ordinary perception. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's very, very precise. <laughs> yeah, it's just ordinary. Um, so it's a word. Yeah. It's a word. <clears throat> How do you know when you know? How do you see when you see? How do you hear when you hear? Mm. We can say that very generally you hear the way you hear. It's unique to the individual, the way you hear. Uh, realization, if there is such a thing, um, sort of uh, makes it very difficult to describe <clears throat> in any kind of precision. You can say it is, and it happened, it's done, <laughs> and that's all, folks. <laughs> Uh, it could be that easy, or, or, or it's just you can't describe it, so it's better to say no realization. Make it easy for yourself. <laughs> Don't be bothered with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And also, you'll know when you get there. I think that's probably the, the best thing to say for people who are on the path. You'll, you'll know when, when you know. You'll know when you know. And however you describe it is going to be relative to your perception in every case, and not as precise as anybody else's, who has a, a different experience, and so they can describe it in their own terms, from their own perceptics, from their own consciousness, as they experience it. And you say, well, that's not it. <laughs> that's not what I experienced. That's not as good as my experience, <laughs> right? You have to be careful in that, see? And not be interested in it. Not be interested in realization. Not be interested in the description of it. Not get caught up in the appearances of any kind of intellectual precision or anything. Fine and dandy, see? Precise or scientific. Wow, this is so scientific. This has got to be the description because it's so, it's so crystal clear. Yeah. And then you ask them, what are you describing? And they'll say, nothing. <laughs> right. And then you're, you're up the creek because you, you say, well, wait a minute, it's all about nothing, that's the realization? <laughs> and, and you get that, no, no, no way. There's <laughs> nothing to it. Excellent. <laughs> right, the deflation is very important. Okay. Right. That, that's important, to get back down to the ground, grounding, so you're not uh, making it more than it needs to be about anything or anybody. As perceived, only as perceived. It would have to be as perceived. Everything as perceived by whom? So then it's either the who or the what. But everything as perceived. Who perceived it? So it, there's everything and there's nothing to make a very long story short. <laughs> right. And, and you see it in the traditions when you're talking about the words of certain masters and the teachings of certain masters. Say, no, this is for these people at this stage, this is for others at this stage. This is for those in, in this stage of life, you know, young, middle-aged, elderly, or whatever. And then this is for those of different levels of experience. 
And then you have those who I have nothing to say to, and those who I can't say enough to. And so the wheel turns. Or oh, as I'd say, it burns. It burns the wheel. And the road. And the whole thing. Seems like I can't think of anything to say right now, except if there's nothing to say. Well, there is and there isn't, <laughs> you see. N nothing to say is not a negative about mm. saying anything. Nothing is a very positive thing. So nothing is a big deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing's a very basis for anything like the Big Bang happening, because they don't know what came before it. <laughs> so then the source of the Big Bang obviously is then, in, in, in their terms and in other people's terms, nothing. It came from nothing, the void, see? enlightenment. Mm -hmm. well, they don't know any different, so one can't say this or that about it. It's just, that's the conclusion. This whole thing came out of nothing. Poof. <laughs> and and it's supposedly expanding faster and faster by the moment. So it's really a paradoxical situation. And where's where's it going? If it's going in every other direction at the speed it's faster than light, you know, as far as some people are concerned. It's beyond light. Yeah. So there's no going, there's no moving because it just is. So it would be easier for them, and those who have to hear and put up with what they say about it, and their theories, and say, it just is, people, beings, it just is, the universe just is. Um, there's something that I feel about my just isness as a, as a student or a practitioner or somebody on the path whatever the words are, that isn't quite satisfied with just is, with, that there's some drive to keep going. Well, that's because it just is, <laughs> in constant motion. So you can't even keep up with it. It so just is fast, <laughs> as light, you can't keep up with it, because you, you have to understand what light is. How are you going to understand what, what light is if, if you're, you're, you're limiting yourself? So you can't be happy. Uh, it's not enough. Uh, the real isn't real enough for you. <laughs> well, you're in, you're in suffering. That's it. You're just suffering. And once, once whatever it is that, it, that happens, that undoes this, or unravels this uptightness, this concern for knowing something a certain way or saying it a certain way, then it, it'll become more obvious to you. It's really the easy, the easiest thing of all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, you can't believe that, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, you wouldn't. And that's because the profound demand that being requires of you. doesn't enable you to open to what it is. <laughs> it's too easy for you. See, and, and yet, you, you hear that the wisdom teachings are replete with it's beyond your mind and beyond yourself. But it's already saying, don't go there, because <laughs> you're going to exhaust yourself for no reason at all. What's the sh what's the shift? How does it is it a is it like a, a slow waking up process? Is it a you know being dragged from for this one process? it's that for the next one it's this 
For that one it's this, for this one it's that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No one knows. That's the beautiful part of it. No one knows. See? Then we have to figure out what the no one is that knows. What? And we have to figure out what is, is that no one knows. See? Except for maybe those who are beyond knowing <clears throat> what it is. So it isn't uncommon to be around those who are considered the ones who know what it is, so they say nothing about it. So there's nothing to say about it. Eat your, eat your potatoes. Don't forget the ketchup. And don't forget your little piece of ginger as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Drink your water slowly. Mm -hmm. Fine. You know, the question and answer process does and doesn't matter. See? It doesn't matter. And because it doesn't matter, it matters to some peeps. See? And because it matters to some peeps, it doesn't matter. See? So we have to understand that. And then come to terms with what we're doing in terms of seeking that which can't be found. There's no, no problem seeking. Right? You have to know it can't be found because you've been seeking it all your life and you still haven't found it. Where haven't you looked? <laughs> what rocks have you not turned over? What experiences have you not had <clears throat> a sufficient amount of experience in? Yeah. And some would say it's not through meditation. When we're still meditating on nothing. So how long do you need to do that? Some say it's uh, under the influence of a teacher. So, uh, some people spend their whole lifetime there. And it's, you ask them, have you understood anything? And they say, no, it's just here. <laughs> still here. 19, still here. Yeah. I'm saying, oh, you, you're still studying the scriptures, the sutras or whatever, memorizing them. So, yes, but nothing's happened of any importance yet. Have you had all the experiences in, in and out and around and about the universe? And say, yes, I've had some, and, but they haven't been as exciting as so-and-so's. And so, so-and-so had spectacular experiences and it's just you know, mind-blowing. But then so-and-so is still waiting. <laughs> so then maybe we have to think about no experience. No message <clears throat> and no practice. Who can do no practice? <laughs> What's the difference between no practice and not practicing? You tell me. One seems to be a uh, when, what, not, not practicing it could be a, an effort. See? No practice, don't even start. There's no thought about it. Zero. So then we got to bring in a factor of zero.
So there's a theory that, of, of, let's say, the path. The idea of the path is helpful to those who <clears throat> haven't got a clue. Yeah. Maybe it's better not knowing about the path and, and being troubled by it. But may, maybe you need to know about it to be troubled by it, to make sure that you're doing what you feel you have to do relative to what that means to you. <clears throat> so the theory is important for the people. And it is because it, it is a theory that you think about it. And, and you attain salvation as soon as you start thinking about it. In some cases, you're already there. Nowhere. Because you're thinking about it, because you stepped out of yourself to even consider it. So, one consideration, and poof, uh, nirvana. Well, a guy who reads it, who's an intellectual fat cat, so to speak, says, there's nothing here, it's nonsense. <laughs> nirvana, poof. <clears throat> Artists come to upon it. Well, I know that. I, I don't need to know this. I'm a painter. Yeah. There's nothing here. Poof. No wonder. A musician comes along, same thing. So, sit and be. I'm doing that when I'm playing my instrument. Poof. No wonder. Nirvanic insight. There's nothing to do. <clears throat> so knowing the nothing is not enough, because <clears throat> it's not long enough. <laughs> so oh, I get it. A zap. It's all about the zap. <laughs> but the zap has to be lived. You have to live in and out the zap. It's a long zap. <laughs> it's a long gone, you have to go, get to gone. See? Zero. But it's long. You have to abide in the zero. And this is a theory in the beginning. Until you find comfort, beyond comfort in it. <clears throat> in other words, you have to find that's all there is. Regardless of what you have to do, regardless of what <clears throat> karmic demands are that are put upon you. You have to be in this zero. Everything from zero, from the inside out. Okay. Requiring nothing like a self, a thought, a mind, a body, or anything. It's just zero, and everything gets done. As you've heard, the trees, the grass, nature, the rivers, sun, light, everything is like continuous. Nothing changes. Everything just is. See how the universe just is. <laughs> and because it just is, you can also experience just isness. <clears throat> You have an idea that it's not enough for you. <laughs> for others, the universe is too much. Just is is too much. So, and then you have to consider it because of your just is bias. What isn't? What is the just is that isn't, according to your bias, enough for you? If not you, <laughs> yourself. Is it just a, a mental glitch? Glitch, maybe? Um, program? Yeah. A way of operating? Yes, perhaps. <laughs> <clears throat> mode of operation, okay. modus operandi, okay. and that's usually on a horizontal wavelength with a spectrum of, you know, I guess you might say, motion included in, in it. 
And then it's more what your emotions are doing to obscure what you can see or be relative to what it is. Say, or is it in your case? So what are you allowing yourself to know that you don't know? And what is it that you don't know that you are allowing yourself to not know? The idea of going backwards to move forward, and the idea of moving forward to go backward is an idea. Okay. It, it's regarding an appearance of motion. It's not real, but it appears that way. Okay. Because we're in time, we have a causal body that's seeing things in terms of sequence, time, uh, moments, okay. time track okay. of what it's, or it is and will be, or could be, or should be. Okay. A lot of people seeing themselves as what they should be, see? not what it is that they can be, but what they should be, not what it is that's already being, but what they should be according to what, for who, says who. See? <clears throat> it seems like there might be a, s a subtle difference between trying to realize like, the potential of some of this karma and then ignoring it and trying to just mm -hmm. be, mm -hmm. trying to just sit. Well, you're not trying to be, you're, just, you're already being. How are you going to try to be what you're always already being? See, we're talking about problemic mechanisms, see, that are self-sabotaging and self-obstructing and feeding and Self stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just drink the water right? <laughs> when you're thirsty. Go to the bathroom when you have to. Nature calls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's something very basic and very direct about that. That. Um, justifies a little closer viewing of it. How how does how does one view it any closer without analyzing it? By viewing it closer without analyzing it. Just like that. Who says you have to analyze it? You? Your mind? Why can't you just see? Huh? Huh? Why can't you just know? It's too simple for you. It's too direct. Yeah. Know is are ignoring what it is. In some cases you have to ignore to know. In those cases, what are you ignoring? What are you ignoring in those cases? Yourself. <laughs> Your self-obstruction. Self-sabotage. But what this is pointing to is easier said than done right? because of programming. So then it becomes an issue. If there's a method, it must be the undoing of all of the self-obstructing programming that appears to be the source of 
not knowing. Okay. Not seeing, not hearing, not feeling, not being. When those things are the primal functions of what it is to live. And now we're talking about living and being without complication, without confusion. Which, when you get to a certain stage of practice, is wisdom. Confusion is wisdom. Unhappiness is wisdom. Unenlightenment is enlightenment. Misery is joy. <laughs> Bliss. <laughs> Pain is bliss. <laughs> uh, yeah, it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> but but it, it is true, because what it is is always present. It's never anywhere else but here now. Okay? When can you be with it in the here now as it is? So what do you make of these visits? Um, well, it feels as though I came here in a tight knot, mm -hmm. and that that has been, if not completely unwound, then at least softened and continuing to become softer. But nothing happened. No one's doing anything, which is interesting. No one cares about it either. No one cares about your condition, except you, who creates it. So, <clears throat> to follow that, if you create it, then you release it. So apparently you came here with the confidence, at best, the confidence, that you could release some of it here because of the space here, see, the space, the mind space, or the understanding which some consider to be radical and some consider to be Dharma, which is more basically what it is. Dharma. Dharma. And what I mean by that in this case is what is true. See? See? What is true is that we don't have to suffer, but we are busy doing it and we hope we are enjoying it. Right? Because it's part of the process of awakening. No suffering, no, no enlightenment. No enlightenment, no suffering. <clears throat> and so this points to the, we're talking about the realization schools and the realization that Self doesn't exist. Being does. Being is. Self is neither here nor there, and maybe it's everywhere, like a monkey in the zoo. Mechanism. We should use wisely, like a mask, take it off, and not be that. And then it is a matter of either to be, or not to be self, or to be and be self, consciously, creatively. But what's the work to realize that? There's no work. What's the process? What's, what's the work that you've done since you got here? <laughs> <laughs> For you to unwind, as you say, what, what did you do? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. So, what this is pointing to is the need to be 
on occasion in the company of certain practitioners or a certain type of practitioner. Where what it is, it's just obvious to them. It's not anything. It's just obvious. It's nothing. You know, kind of like when people see me going through this. I'm not trying to do that. It just, it just is what it is. And usually perfect for the situation, whether people like it or not, it doesn't matter. It's just like sitting down at a meal and not making a big deal about it. Yeah, just eating what you have to eat, if you can eat it. Put the rest to, you know, to the garbage, if you will. So then, if we can theorize that there is something to do, it's relax, firstly, you want to relax. So you get to that place where you, you're actually so aware of your self-programmed that you know you're being neurotic, right? And you don't have to be neurotic. And that's just a very bright moment when you see you don't have to be yourself. If the result is neuroses and unhappiness and suffering for you and your people, no one says that has to be the case. That is the case, but it doesn't have to be the case. Mm -hmm. So you need to look at it and, and be really scientific about it, not pretending to be scientific about it. You're just knocking yourself out here and there okay? because you're a scientist. I don't believe it. You sound like somebody else we know who keeps going around admitting to himself or maybe propping himself into believing he's a scientist. What does that mean? A knower? Do you know yourself? Do you know what yourself creates and how it creates its suffering? And neuroses and unhappiness and confusion and self-division and self-conflict and worry? Mm. Yeah. Concern? Mm. The scientists or practitioners Real practitioners are great scientists because they're watching everything come in their mind, in the body. They say, hmm, good. Peace. It's all peace. Every stitch of it, every smell of it, every whiff of it is peace. So peace it is for them. No big a deal. One big, long, deep hue relates into infinity. So, I mean, that's very, very obvious that being here, sitting with you, having these conversations and having this relationship is, is very helpful. Um, but there's also a felt need to kind of continue unwinding elsewhere and mm -hmm. in other ways. Um, I, I, there's a, it seems clear that We need to be able to do this ourselves, too. Well, you need to know what it is before you can actually do it. <laughs> <laughs> so you come here to know what it is, so that, you know, the, the hope is you can do it. Then. So it requires a certain amount of study and dedication to a certain way of, I guess, breathing, breathing, see? And sounding and chanting, see? It's part of this process. Expressing. Exhaling properly. See, it's all about the exhaling and letting go of stuff, see. Which doesn't come natural to many people. It should come natural to the musicians, sure. But it doesn't. What comes natural to me is maybe unnatural to other people. What is natural to other people may be unnatural to me, so I need to adapt myself to. So what it is that I need to be doing more by example or by resonance. Mm, nice word. 
Yeah, musical word, right? Planetary word, yeah. Vibrational word. <clears throat> and so people tell me, if they're not watching one of the zillions of movies out there, they pay, play one of my own sort of, you know, beginners uh, movies. Uh, and the conversations that we have made available to other people, and they sit with that and they start to get a sense of what it is. And maybe they'll step up from that and go with more of a professional teacher, or, you know, adept or whatever it is out there, a great teacher, and get more from them. See, it's possible. See? Step up. But if that doesn't work, then you come back here to nobody, right, and no one, and sample it again for yourself. And that sounds fair enough. You keep sampling it until you get it. So mm. And for some they have to be around certain teachers and or practitioners for years and years and years. Not visiting every now and then, you know, once or twice a year. That's not enough. For what? Mm. If you visit a guitar player uh, uh, who is, uh, let's say, virtuoso or something, you got to do more than just visit once and twice a year to get the level of virtuosity that might be witnessed, say, or evident. Say. So, it depends on what it, it is that you need to open to in you to bring out whatever it is in you that satisfies your need to be whatever it is you seem to feel you need to be, or who you feel you need to be, right? or what you feel you need to be, <laughs> yeah. and so on. So this is practice, the visit or practice, it's part of your pilgrimage to come and sit here, <clears throat> ask good questions because of your Buddhist background, let's say, yogic background, let's say, that's also valid. And this is part of that process. And I don't always have the luxury as a human to, to be able to speak in these times, so most of the other people are not at that level yet. It's more practical, mundane, painful, very painful, crazy, chaotic situations, but very human. That's very much the world okay, today. So you have the, the privilege of thinking along these lines, of, uh, let's say, practicing, recreating yourself to not be your enemy, <laughs> your worst enemy. See? You want to recreate yourself to be your best friend. See? Embrace yourself once and for all. Just do it. <laughs> say, ah, I'm okay. It's good. <laughs> it's real good to be at all, yes, to be right at ease, at peace, in the flow right, of the reality of the heart being the universe, the universe being the heart itself. Yeah. Yeah. And be grateful for it. We have to be deeply in that moment, not superficially, oh, I think I'm just going to do this, like a little ritual, a little procedure, and then you think, boom, okay, you did it, and so let me get back to nonsense, ignorance, stupidity, neurosis, and everything else, BS, and all the rest of the things that are really much more delicious and enticing and seductive than just stopping everything and sitting. Into the light itself. and being the light itself. You don't have to be yourself, you can be the light itself. You choose. <laughs> it's your choice. You. When getting into something, when when starting 
either a new project, a new journey, mm. basically uh, one that begins to happen. Um, I guess, how do you negotiate that situation to make sure that it's as um, kind of positive and healthy as, as it can be? So, for example, not starting if it's something that mm. doesn't need to be started. Or well, if you <clears throat> if you don't know it, if it needs or doesn't need to be started, you, you better wait. You better wait, <laughs> wait until you have a clear picture of what it is you need to do. So, in other words, don't don't start anything on whim unless you know that your impulses are very good and clear. Hmm. Yeah. So you have to you have to understand your process of impulsing. <clears throat> so, like in the case of my music, which is primarily intuitive, so I have to wait till I'm in the situation, right? And it's thick and it's dense and it's intense and it's you know, burning already. And uh, my impulses are geared for that. It's my normal. So yeah, no, I like that. Oh, 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 oh. Whatever's going on, we relate to it and play it and uh, experience what it is. And have no regrets, no regrets. <clears throat> so you need to determine for yourself what the path is that you need to take that equals the path of no regrets rather than the path of hesitation and doubt, <laughs> concern, worry, <laughs> who knows, maybe, what if, <laughs> yeah. darkness. You have to have your own center, your own center first. When you are designed as you may be, right, to be social for less than real reasons, social to be social, to be friendly, then you may be polluting your, your circuits. There's no real cause there. Why? Why get into a mix, whether it's with a woman or a man, just to make you feel more confused about what it is you've already been doing <laughs> and that you have to do <laughs> and that you will be doing as you move forward. You don't want mixing just to keep you mixed up. See? In other words, if you dare to mix, you want to make sure it's a, like a calculated risk. Say, no, I want to mix with this person for this reason because it's known that this person has this level of experience and that's going to help me in this way, precisely, very precisely. See? So it could be a teacher, we're talking about spiritually, for the vertical, sort of uh, dimensional experiences, right? Or it could be horizontal experience in terms of knowledge and occupational, uh, let's say, uh, development. See? Education, business education. You need to be knowing of your needs that well. So I really don't need to get drunk with these people at a meal, right? Because right, they're doing it, so I have to do it because I'm one of them. And so let me do what they do and let me go to the hell they're in, right? And let me be subject to their hellish sort of like confusion just to be a nice guy and I'll deal with it. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> let the fools be with the fools. <clears throat> However, on the other hand, if doing that what's really exactly precisely what you need to do to make these next steps to whatever it is you're working towards with a hundred percent certainty that it's going to be like just more and more and more stepping up and up and up and up. No question. It's obvious. Right. Done deal.
If a race driver needs to hang out with certain mechanics, he has to drink at their table, go for it if you have to. If it's going to be to your advantage on the track, no problem. Say, so, yeah, I just heard some tips. Yeah, I mean, I'm a little tipsy, but you know, I got what I needed from this, so to speak, whatever that is. See? See? Creating, see? relating with purpose, see? part of a, an understanding. A general sort of like approach to, oh yes, I can do a little bit of this because I need that. I know where I'm going. I'm not succumbing to anybody's trips. It's a step on my path, so to speak. Life can be like that. Without a lot of this, just knowing. Just, this can be done intuitively. It doesn't take a whole bunch of analyzing and psychologizing. Uh, no, no, this is moving forward, stepping forward and up and out. Yeah. So I say you need to spend time with yourself, become friends with you well enough to know how much of whatever anybody else is doing you actually need. Because all of it's going to slow you down unless there's this pull up hanging out with so-and-so has more money, more business, more opportunities, and you know you need to move in that direction. Calculation. Right. Just knowing the field. You need to know the field. Mm. Rather than succumbing to the field of not knowing. It works against you. It keeps you in no man's land. <laughs> in, in a certain sense. Now, you want to get to the spiritual no man's land in another sense, and that's a higher state. <laughs> Where being the no man is cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very practical. Practical advice. Well, yeah. spiritual advice is precise, mm. practical. See? It's not just metaphysical, it's very physical, very technical. Yeah. Yeah. Because spiritual practice is a disciplining process. Yeah. To discipline the mind, to focus, penetrating, going deeper, peeling layers of consciousness, debris away, clearing the path. All of this is part of the practice. Question? Uh, the question was... Don't put anybody before you. Uh, uh, and we're not talking about egoic you. Okay, we're talking about purpose you, what your mission and purpose is. It has nothing to do with your ego. Uh, actually, if you can see clear enough, then it has nothing to do with the ego. It's something that's clear to you to do, and you do it. With or without ego, whether you feel good or bad or not, you do it. So it's not about the egos, highs and lows, and masquerading around, and reacting and not reacting, and acting. No, no, it's going to do that. So, the same for your music. If your drumming is, is real, then it's not about your ego. Something deeper than that. You've got to know you at the soul level. Let's use that word for a minute. So not at the self or personality or the appearance level. So, and usually you have men and women coming together to socialize and then sexualize, then romanticize and then emotionalize. That means really mess up the frequencies often, too often. Even though you're loving each other, so you say, right? you're, you're loving the pleasure and the mixing, but it's not clarifying anything. So it's not really doing what it's supposed to do, which is to clarify and guide you to a place where you say, no, man, I can't live without this person because this person is enabling me to really advance like that and like that, like that. This is like a missing like booster here. Wow, yeah, boom, no questions. It's up, it's up, it's up, it's up. Everything is falling into place. You have relationships. Sometimes it seems like that. Sometimes. <clears throat> so when then you do, you, if you're going to play drums, you play your drums. It's so odd. Everybody knows you're like peaking. 
It's not about doubt, confusion, or who knows. It's not a big question mark in the atmosphere. What's going on here? Should it be? Should it not be? Should I do? Should I not do? No, there's none of that. It's like boom, right? Lightning straight through the atmosphere, okay? straight to the ground. Clear the bell. We're talking about the the, cl the clear as the bellness of the impulse of creation. Clear. And if it's clear, that means your emotions are clear, your mind body alignment is clear. Once that's not clear, what you're doing is not clear. However. In some cases, what you're doing can be done to clear it up. And you have to know if that's what you're doing it for. Okay. Because when I play, it creates clearance that is pretty uh, obvious for people. Yeah. Maybe not for everybody, but certainly enough people come up to me and say they really needed that. Not because of what they heard, as if they needed to hear the same old tunes and the same old jingles and same old whatever it is, props. I said, no, I really needed the clearance that came with that. If there was something being cleared up, we need to do that for ourselves in our practice. So, okay, sweetheart or whatever it is, sweethearts, guys, women, whatever, aside, go, go to your room now. Let me be with me and my inner. Let me try and resonate with my soul because it's not going to resonate with your confusion. It's got to resonate with my deeper which has nothing to do with confusion or anybody else, see, the direct, the direct line, right, right, to the heart, right? nothing to do with conversation or peeps or any kind of anything, it's just here now, it's present, deeply, having to do with the perfect nature of what is true in you as a heart being, already, doesn't need anything, doesn't need anybody saying anything, doing anything, or Confusing the circuits or the atmosphere with their own song and dance. It's got nothing to do with anybody. It's got to do with the trees. It's got to do with the atmosphere. Okay. The stillness of nature. The trueness of nature. The clear, clearness of nature. Okay. The purity of nature as such. It's perfection. Nature. And we need to be true to that momentarily because for the most part we're used by time programs. Got to do this, the watch. Got to do this at this time. Got to, it's got to be done by this time. Obligations. No problem with them. But they got to be put aside too. People have to stop being people. They have to stop being others. They have to stop being selves. They have to stop being program bots out here. You got to put that aside and that's what practice means. Time off. While you're conscious, not while you're unconscious, because then that's like, you know, <laughs> force time, coerce time, pass out time, right? Sleep time. No, this is like stop time, cessation time. Conscious, creative cessation. Zero peeps, zero obligations, just getting back to breathing and restarting the whole process. Refreshment. Psychic reattunement to what is real in you. It's got nothing to do with anybody else. Sex does not a marriage make. <laughs> it might not be good for marriage, yet when people get divorced, they say the best thing about it was the sex, <laughs> but it didn't make a difference. <laughs> I hate that heap of garbage. <laughs> sex was great, but can't stand my spouse. Anymore, see. see. So we don't want to have to get to that place. So we need to know when to be in the balanced state of not so much self, but aloneness. See. Get to that sparkling place of a music called Blessed Aloneness. And yeah. The beauty of that. That's because when you're not so focused on other 
as absolute or exclusive. The universe has presence. You're breathing, your emotions are able to breathe. So you need to come back to free breathing and free being. And then go back to your obligations and your contracts. It's part of the balance. Otherwise, too much kill you and it. And then you have to die into it and restart the whole thing over again. And unless you change, it's going to be one after another. Same problem, same solution say, that you know now. Yeah. Comments? Um, mm. Yeah, that nobody's ever suggested to me to play faster. Mm. This is the first time, probably, ever. Mm. <laughs> He has a lot of first times. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see advantage of being somewhat of a musician in my case, you know. A uh, jazz musician is helpful. Creative musicians even more helpful. Uh, spiritual musicians even best. Uh, mm -hmm. When we talk about transcending the mind, uh, you can transcend your time. You have to transcend your time, your timing, right? Your comfort zone. That's for your girlfriend, for the guru. We need sizzle, <laughs> sizzle, sizzle, real. Yeah? And it's not fast and speed for speed. No, it's fast and speed for openness. Yeah? Yeah. Because whatever speed you are, that yourself limited that. And the heart didn't limit that. You self limited that. So when you ask us, oh, that's too slow. The guru says that's too slow. You realize that it was. And once you get up there and say, wow, so I said, what's slow? I didn't think it was slow. I thought it was fast. And then the guru said, no, no. Step it up. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not speed for speed. It's speed for openness. See? Yeah. Openness. Yeah. It's, not, it's not speed to reinforce the past and what you've been. It's speed to open up what you need to be. See? Mm -hmm. Then the instrument becomes a, a doorway, possibilities, and maybe also good practice. Come on. At that, at that speed, mm -hmm. things stop feeling fluid in a sense, in, mm -hmm. in a particular way, but also... Well, you see, the, you're talking comfort zone. Yeah. This defies that. See, it defies that. Your norm has to be defied, otherwise your norm dictates. I have the, this handicap, which I've been working with as a musician, and it would have me play less, infinitely less, if I believed it. The pain throbs up. Saying, no, 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 don't do this, don't do this. The hand screams and begs for mercy, say, I can't play this. Why are you pushing me? Why are you so mean and cruel? Say, no. This is to create openness beyond limitation. Because we are set in our comfort zones created of self limitation. Not all of which need to be destroyed and defied. But when it comes to the teacher, the teacher knows. Yeah. So everything is done in a certain conscious manner. So not to prove anything to the teacher. The teacher doesn't need anything to prove. Proving something to, to you, the limiter in you. <laughs> and that the teacher don't play that. Right? And you shouldn't either. Nobody needs to play that. Except in the beginning. But when you come to the teacher, in a manner of speaking, in sort of like poetic terms, say, now be ready to be the wood for the fire, say, of realizing your potential. Mm -hmm. And as I said, for that moment you reminded me of Rashid. That's a good thing. All right. Because he was pretty mindless, gone player. 
See? It was a compliment. It had nothing to do with speed. It had more to do with abandon than speed. See? Yeah. That's, that's a, uh... Liberation. No girlfriend. No barriers. Right? No compromise. Yeah. The real play is no compromise. None whatsoever. Hundred percent, maybe a hundred one percent. That extra percent. <laughs> All right, very good. Well, boy, it's you. <laughs>